Good day, DEFCON and Car Hacking Village. I am Johnson Petit, and I'm here with two of my colleagues, Rashid Ansari and Kong Chen. We are the research team for Qualcomm working on connected and automated vehicle security. Today, we're going to talk about misbehavior detection and demonstrating you some attacks on real onboard unit. So before we start, I think it is important that we understand what is VDOX communication. So VDOX enable devices like vehicles, pedestrians, or roadside unit to be equipped with an onboard unit, a device that enables all of those component to broadcast information in their surrounding to create an awareness. So this, in this example, we have three cars and are all equipped with VDOX technology. And we'll see that now the white car is performing an emergency brake. Therefore, because the onboard unit is connected to the CAN bus, it can detect that there is a high deceleration, for example, and that in the brake pressure, and therefore we'll be able to generate a message that is sending to the surrounding vehicle. So those messages are called basic safety message here in the US, so that's the BSM that we're gonna talk about in this talk. When the vehicle receive a BSM, they are able to understand that the white car is performing an emergency brake and therefore themselves brake, avoiding a chain of collision. So we see the huge benefit, and the safety benefit, especially in that V2V use case that we are showing you. This is an emergency electronic brake light application that is consuming BSM sent by other vehicle to understand that an emergency brake is happening. So there is many application for safety and auto efficiency that are designed for V2X. So this is the context here. We are looking at those type of application. So then, of course, we understand that from a security standpoint, we do not want external attacker to be able to send bad messages to the other vehicles. So all the messages that are sent are actually digitally signed. So in the same example we just showed before, now we have the white car is actually signing with this private key, attaching a certificate, the message before sending it. The receiver will use the keys in order to verify that this is sent by an authenticated vehicle. Good. But as you might imagine, this doesn't prevent any bad content to be sent. You could be authenticated, but sending wrong information. So here in our same example, we have here the white car is an attacker, is sending a fake EBL to the other vehicles. The other vehicle will verify the, the signature. It's all valid. Therefore, they have to use the content which says there is an emergency break. Here in, in, the, in the animation you just saw here, the blue car didn't stop. And you might wonder why, it's because we can make an assumption that this vehicle was equipped, or is equipped with a camera and therefore didn't see the white car braking. But the red car had, has no line of sight and therefore has to trust that information. So we clearly understand and you need a misbehavior protection system to defend against such attacks. And this is what we're gonna present today is really about the attacks and how you perform this and how you become, you protect against this. So let me show you a little bit other example about misbehavior. Here on the left-hand side, this is an application called intelligence signaling. This is where you have a traffic light equipped with a roadside unit with the same kind of equipment to receive the message sent by the vehicle. And by reading the BSM, it adjusts the signal phase and time. Therefore, it's gonna play with the red and green on this different segment coming at the intersection. And an attack that was demonstrated by some researcher uh, showed that if the vehicles are sending wrong BSMs, I'm gonna just run a video here if you send that, and after 30 minutes of attack, you can see this long line at each of at two, or actually three intersections, a three segment of the intersection. So an application that consumed the BSM that is fake, even though it's purely authenticated, if it, you do not do a misbehavior analysis detection, you might see issues like this in intelligent signaling. Now looking on the right hand side, we have a position jump attack. So the position here in that representation, you are, the ego vehicle is the green dot. You're driving and an attacker is 
sending messages with the same identifier, but he's jumping, he's changing his position. That's where you see this blue dot, this is the BSM received. And it's flickering because it's actually jumping back and forth and sometimes outside of the frame here that you can see. But it's basically doing a back and forth. That's the position jump attack. And what is interesting, as you're gonna hear this sound in a few seconds, is that sometimes this is performing here a forward collision warning. So even though this was a position jump, you might see you need to detect those kinds of behavior. Same identifier and still jumping back and forth, that shouldn't be taken in consideration by an application. I have another example to show you. Um, here, this is another representation of the onboard unit. Here, this is, we used MATLAB actually as a visualization. And uh, you are the red car. And all the other blocks that you see, the blue and orange one, are, are the vehicles also sent by the V2X message. So you can represent this local dynamic map with all the vehicles. On the left-hand side, you have for first misbehavior, it's a sh changing headings because part of the BSM, there is the position, there is your kinematic states, your velocity, and, but also you have the headings that helps pass planning, for example. So you know, where is this car going? Especially when you perform pass position using Kelvin filter, you want to use that heading. And here in this specific example, you see the car actually spinning. It's because we are changing the heading all the time. So now your system that consumed the BSM to perform pass planning might be really confused by this kind of behavior. In the middle, we have a Sybil attack. So this is where an attacker is using multiple certificates that are all valid at once. So could be 20 certificates valid per week. And for example, you'll be using your 20 or 19, depends if you want to use yours. And you send your 19 to create 19 other ghost vehicles on the road and you can make them move as you wish. So that is what happened when you map all the BSM you receive and put them on this virtual you know, view. It is really hard for a connected and even automated vehicle in the future to behave in this kind of really noisy environment. On the right hand side, we have a position overlap. This is where an attacker is actually overlapping two of those vehicles. So here, that is basically what we see. And here even overlapping with your own position. And those are just a couple of examples about what we call misbehavior that are all authenticated messages, but the content is wrong. So when we look at VDOX misbehavior, there's what we call a misbehavior life cycle. So, you receive those VDOX messages, and here we gave example about basic safety message because they are the one commonly frequently sent every, every 100 millisecond to other neighboring vehicle. The first stage is the detection. You want to do misbehavior detection. So what do you do in this case? The goals are to validate the position of the sender, his motion, its motion, and the presence. To do that, you can also, you have to look, sorry, at the application content. So the application layer content, meaning you look at the content of the message itself. You will look at the different field, are they plausible, are they actually consistent? But one important thing is that you need to understand the, app, the effect on the V2X application that is consuming that ESM. Because not all messages are actually triggering um, the, an application event. In our case of the EEBL that we shown earlier, you, you will perform an EBL, so perform yourself a heartbreaking or warning the user only if the vehicle is ahead of you with a certain deceleration, for example, and the brake status flag at one. So I could be sending wrong messages, but I'm not ahead of you. And therefore, you will, it will not trigger the V2X application in this case. So it is important to understand that because not all messages are equal and therefore should be investigated. As we're going to demonstrate in the demo later, uh, it is really also important to look at the lower layer of the ITS stack. I'm going to give you an example where you can use signal strengths uh, of the signal to really identify the position of the, or the presence of another vehicle. So, but then really finally, the, when you build a detection system, you need to have a timely detection. 
you want a real-time detection because this is a safety of life application. This is the information is useful to, in our example of an EBL to perform an emergency break. Therefore, you need to re detect that attack really quickly. You cannot afford to wait the whole chain uh, until a global reaction. And you have to do this, so in real time, if possible, and with high accuracy. And that's the performance part, where in some cases, in our case, for example, we want to favor recall over precision, because it is important to capture as much attack as possible than really precise only on one attack. So, but that will depend on your system and your use case, what you will consider. So this is everything you need to consider when you want to build a detection system. As soon as you've detected, it's not just enough to detect and give it to the application. You need to perform a local reaction. And two examples about what could happen locally on your vehicle is to dismiss the further messages from the same identifier. But as we know, there is privacy by design in video X, which means that we, the v, each vehicle are using pseudonyms and can change them according to pseudonym change strategies. So what about pseudonym change in this case? If you dismiss that, the same standard will simply change identifier. It's still a question here. Another uh, reaction that we do locally is to adjust your kinematic state. So you will perform potentially a graceful degradation. Let's say that you are in a platoon of vehicle, of connected vehicle, where you use those BSM to know that the vehicle is ahead and, and agree on the inter-vehicle distance. And now you detect that in that platoon, there is a misbehavior. You better actually say, oh, let me leave the platoon or degrade and say, if this was uh, um, a level four autonomous vehicle, for example, you want to go at level three, you want to go back to the, to the driver or you want to warn the driver. So it is important to think in terms of the cyberspace, dismissing the further message and on also on the physical space, what do you do? Then also when you do your detection, you will perform, you will generate a report. And that's the reporting phase. So here, depending on the type of misbehavior, you will have different type of misbehavior report. And this is currently under standardization to actually agree about what should be in that report. When do you put the evidence? What evidence do you need? And this report is important because it is sent to encrypted and sent to the MA, the misbehavior authority. It is a component part of the PKI for, and he now work is the SCMS. The misbehavior authority, receive all the misbehavior report for diff from different vehicles, aggregate those misbehavior report, and it is the only one that can actually link this, uh, the different pseudonym to the same device by actually a process of talking to the other SCMS component, PKI component. And this is how, for example, they could detect a Sybil attack because they will know that all those devices are linked to the same pseudonym. So that is an example about what is happening in the investigation. And then the MA will decide what is the global reaction. In cyberspace, this is a revocation, for example, of, of the enrollment certificate. If you cannot revoke, as it is the case currently in Europe, you just block the generation of future pseudonym certificate for that vehicle. And then you will put that on, for example, for the, in the US, we put that on the CRL, the certification allocation list that is then provided to all vehicles so that they can dismiss immediately the message. But something that isn't discussed yet is really what happened in the physical space. Um, you could, for example, inform the owner of the, of the vehicle, of the device, and to perform an inspection, to repair, and therefore to perform a re-enrollment into the system in a secure location. Or maybe why not performing a remote vehicle immobilization. So now you are stopping the vehicle where it is because that's been a misbehavior. Of course, this remote vehicle immobilization it could be problematic if this is coming from a faulty sensor and not a real malicious attacks. But you know what we are saying, it's like there's a need of cyber reaction and physical space also reaction. So this is the whole misbehavior life cycle. And as we can definitely see it, as an attacker, if I fool the detection part, you will never report me, you will never react to it, you will know no investigation and no global reaction. Therefore, for this presentation, we're gonna focus on this part, about how an attacker can defeat the detection system. And we're gonna show you a progression, you know, how do we usually do the attack? So where are we gonna start and then slowly make it a smarter and smarter attacker? 
for this now, I will have my colleague Rashid. I'm going to take over to talk to you about this progression of attacks. Can you hear me now? All right, yeah. Thank you, Jonathan. Uh, so, uh, as Jonathan talked about uh, about the detection portion of uh, misbehavior misbehavior detection system, um, so the this slide shows you all the possible ways that we look at right now to uh, to, to to detect any attack. So, any any attack on the application or or uh, or on, on, on the physical layer or anything. So uh, let's go over, over what, what, we, what we do about, uh, how we go about uh, checking all the, uh, ch checking all, every, everything in the V2X space here. So first we look at plus basic plausibility checks where we look at if the speed or angle or acceleration in a VSM or a CAM message is unrealistic. Is it is it too high or is, is the turning angle too 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 much? Is the vehicle as you saw in the heading change example? Is the vehicle really changing changing its heading a lot? Is this really possible? And we can do this at on a per message basis, uh, and and that's how and you don't need a chain of uh, messages for this. Uh, so so a, a, an attack can be detected with one message as well in in this case. Uh, then we look at consistency with the sensor. So the, we look at uh, whatever messages we are getting, like what, whatever speed you are getting, you compare that with, let's say, a radar. Like if a radar is tracking any other vehicle, whatever speed that radar, uh, that, that you can calculate using the radar input, you compare that with the, uh, with the information you're getting in the, in the V2X, in the, in the BSM. Uh, so, uh, that way, that way, this can also be done in a per message basis, but can only be done on vehicles that are nearby. And by nearby, I mean in line of sight, because radars, cameras can only work in line of sight, but not in non line of sight. Uh, similarly, we look at the RF. Uh, we compare the position, uh, the, uh, the direction, the velocity. We look at the consistency on the RF side as well as on the V2X side, uh, and then. We would also look at map data. So we look, we look at the consistency with the map data we had. So if a car, for example, has a position that goes you know, through buildings, that, that is not really a lane that we know about. So we would really like to, so we, so that we, we really like to see, okay, is, is the information coming in, uh, coming in the V2X message, does that correlate with what we have in the map data? And then we uh, we look at consistency between the senders' messages. So uh, consistency within the message itself from a sender. Like if the brake status, if brakes, uh, for example, if the brake status is not consistent for deceleration between the messages, like is the if if the brake is applied, is your is the acceleration negative? Is the vehicle really decelerating? So that is one example we look at is the position speed and acceleration, is that consistent with each other? So that is one, one more thing. And there are one, many more things that we can look at in, in a BSM or a CAM message. Then we look at consistency with other, other vehicles messages. So for example, the, if, you, if, if you have multiple vehicles going on a highway and you have one way, try and you look at one way traffic, all the vehicles are heading towards this one direction and, and one vehicle is coming directly in the opposite direction. So that is a possible misbehavior. It can be that there is some crazy driver who is coming on this direction, but it is really highly unlikely and we consider that as a misbehavior. Or we look at, that is one example, but we, in, a, in, a, in generic terms, we look at the trajectory that is implied by one car and match it with others. Like for speed, for example, if the speed should all, speed of vehicles should almost be similar on a, on a highway scenario as well. So we look at that as well. Now, this is how we detect. And come now talking about the fun part, how do you attack all of this? So you look at, so what we do is we look at, uh, 
we look at the uh, so we look at how an attacker would go about attacking a uh, 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 the misbehavior system or the uh, V2X system as a whole on on the receiver. So the attacker could attack the security layer. He could attack on the L1, L2 layer, that physical MAC layer. That is, he could perform some attacks on the spectrum, or he could attack on the application layer as well. So, for example, of security layer, what you can do, you can send outdated messages. That that means the generation time of the message is too far behind, but you are still receiving it, that message now. So that uh, that that is kind of an attack. With, that is kind of a message that you shouldn't have really received. But and then the other attack is the vehicle could just send unsigned BSMs, and you just receive those messages. You say, oh, this is not authenticated. You drop that. Um, then the to uh, to counter an outdated uh, V2X message uh, attack, the, way the, the attacker could uh, forward the generation time in, in the BSMs and could keep that current to actually try to circumvent um, the uh, old message check uh, uh, that, that can be performed on the security layer. The attacker could also send message without a certificate to invoke no certificate check. He could also uh, send an expired certificate. He could incorrectly sign a, me a message, uh, and then he could be inconsistent on the channel uh, as well during transmission. Now, all of these attacks on the security layer, what they could do is they can they can starve the receiver of resources of process of uh, of processing power. So you so even though all these messages are false and they raise all these concerns. The receiver is already lose. Receiver could already lose uh, processing any uh, any BSM that is from a legitimate vehicle, and possibly uh, possibly not react to any uh, real incident that might happen in front of it. So similarly, uh, uh, you look at coming to spectrum misbehavior on the physical and MAC layer. The attacker could, you know, as as we as we see in any wireless communication, could just jam the signal, just blast energy on the channel, and you can, and the receiver cannot hear anything. Then he could also perform a DOS attack. For example, he can send only preambles. He can just say, oh, my message length is this much," and does not send the message, which is uh, truncated after preamble attack that we have heard about recently. Uh, and a, a lot of uh, wireless uh, communication standards actually ask the receiver to wait for a certain period of time after the counter to wait for the message uh, so that they can read the message during that time. So the attacker actually, uh, so the receiver just waits and just cannot, does not process any other message that's coming in. So that can be a DOS attack that the attacker could perform. Uh, and then the attacker could change his MAC address so that if you uh, if you filter uh, MAC ad according to if you if you recognize an attacker's MAC address, you'll say okay from the if I get any message with this MAC address, I'm going to filter any messages coming from this guy. He can change that MAC address and still pass your filter. Coming to the application layer, uh, the attacker could just fuzz all the fields like like we like we do in in all. Uh, like we do in all, uh, uh, you know, like we do in testing any any mechanism, you, the attacker could just say, "Oh, you know, I'm sending a speed of minus infinity to infinity, and uh, see, and I, I want to see how does the way does my does the receiver really accept those messages, um, or what what kind of uh, behavior does the vehicle uh, show me if I if I send the if I send such messages?" Then, as Jonathan showed about civil attack. The vehicle could change MAC addresses, use the same certificate or different pseudonym certificates, and create those vehicles. And then, lastly, uh, the attacker could could formulate specific messages to fool V2X applications. And we're going to talk about this in detail now uh, with an example of the of the EBL application in the next couple of slides. So here you can see um, uh, you can see that there is uh, there are two cars here. The blue one we consider as the victim vehicle, the benign vehicle, and the the, the dark gray uh, car is the attacker. Now the attacker formulates a normal BSM, which is marked all as green, where all the fields of the BSM are consistent with each other. You have position, you have speed, you have positive acceleration. You don't have any braking. You don't have any EBL flag set. The EBL flag. Um, is the is is the flag that has to be set for the EBL application to actually react to uh, to a hard breaking event. 
So whenever whenever a vehicle, if it is hit and it is heartbreaking, the EBL flag is set and the receiver, uh, whenever it receives the EBL application, sees that flag first and then checks and then checks other things. So here, uh, the attacker at first just transmits a normal VSM, a, a benign vehicle receives that message and says, oh, it's a normal car, it was about on its way. And then now our attacker says, okay, now I'm gonna start my attack. And now the attack, and now the attacker puts the EBL flag as one. And you can see that all other, it has, he, he has not changed all other fields, right? So the break is zero and the acceleration is also positive. This should not really be the case. But if you don't have any misbehavior detection, the uh, benign vehicle when he receives this message, he says, oh, it's a heartbreaking event. I should break it safety critical to me or I might, uh, or I might crash into, into the vehicle. And our attacker goes about his way uh, uh, ahead. So at this point, our vehicle, uh, our vehicle maybe looks at, oh, uh, maybe he doesn't see any car in the V2X space after a while. And he's like, oh, okay, I, there was no face though. There was no car in, in the V2X space, uh, neither physically in front of me. So I should just continue my motion. Maybe my EBL application was full. So this is what is the attack that we consider. And here we assume that the, uh, that the benign vehicle doesn't use his uh, sensors like camera or, uh, or radar uh, in, in this example uh, to, to verify uh, messages. So how would you detect such kind of an attack? So firstly, as it might be apparent that you look at the, uh, look at the inconsistency within the BSM fields. And you say, oh, okay, so if there are, there's an inconsistency, it is possible that this, this message is, is wrong. Uh, and you can also check the telemetry of the attacker. So if the attacker, uh, after an EBL, you would, you would uh, expect that the vehicle would stop. But the, if the vehicle continues to change its positions that the and has a positive speed and the vehicle keeps on moving, meaning it doesn't have any change between the... Uh, telemetry that was before the attack or after the attack, that is another indication where how you could detect such kind of an attack. Now we talk about fake EBL version two attack where our attacker has gotten smarter. He's like, okay, you check for both of those things. You check for inconsistency and you check for, uh, you check for my telemetry. So I'm gonna become smarter. Now again, the attacker transmits a normal VSM, goes about his way, the uh, benign vehicle follows it. Now he transmits Now he transmits uh, a, formula, a fake EBL uh, message formulated specifically uh, to counter the detection in the first version. So the, you can see that the EBL flag is set as one, the brake is also set as one, and the acceleration is also negative. So when our benign vehicle receives this, uh, his, detect his detectors don't give him any indication. And this vehicle just sees, oh, okay, I, it's a heartbreaking event. And the attacker also stops in the in the V2X space, the attacker moves physically but stops in the V2X space. So the so our benign vehicle sees oh there is a vehicle stopped. So the telemetry has changed as well. So I should break. Like the victim vehicle should uh, breaks in in this case and does not continue motion. So this is this is an improvement on the attack. Now how would you detect this kind of an attack? Is you can't like you you we look at we have looked at all the application layer side of things in the previous checks. Now we look at the physical layer side of things, where we look at the signal strength versus the distance. So as you can see on the graph on this, uh, on this bottom right section, uh, on the x-axis you have the distance and on the y-axis you have the signal strength. And what we have seen is that the signal strength should reduce, with, uh, reduce as the distance increases between, the, uh, between, the, between any two vehicles in this kind of a graph. But in this case, if the, if the attacker has is sending constant positions in front of you, but is actually physically changing his, his, his positions, his characteristics would look something like uh, the, red, the red line you see. The distance is, is same, but the signal strengths keep reducing. So this is how you could actually uh, find out uh, genuine vehicles versus an attack, attack vehicle uh, in such cases. Now our, our attacker thinks, okay, now you remember me and I'm going to uh, try to circumvent this as well. So we have a version three attack that the attacker could uh, perform as well. 
So here the attacker again uh, transmits a normal VSM. And now he again, you know, formulates a fake email message with all the fields consistent and transmit that message over our, receive, our vehicle receives it. The attacker stops in V2X space, transmits constant positions after the attack, but continues physically, right? So our victim vehicle, again, stops. It's just like the version two attack. But now what the attacker does is that the attacker uh, goes into a silent period. So the uh, attacker would go into a silent period here where uh, it would stops it would stop transmitting any BSMs. So to conserve the storage space in the benign vehicle, the benign vehicle would check its database like, oh, I have how how far have I received any any BSM recently from this vehicle from this attack from this attacker? And you would say no, there, it has been a long time since I have not received it. Let's say five seconds. Five seconds is also a long time uh, in a real time system. And uh, the, uh, we assume that the benign vehicle just uh, deletes all the information just to conserve its space, its, uh, its uh, storage space. And uh, now he doesn't see any vehicle anyways in front of it. So it starts continuing its motion in the V2X space. It doesn't see any vehicle, so it starts continuing its motion in the physical space as well. Now the attacker, he says, okay, now you have forgotten about me. He waits for this vehicle ahead, like it slows down or something, and performs the same attack. Now, since our benign vehicle doesn't have any history on this attacker, since he deleted this uh, earlier, the, it would fall. It would fall for the same attack again. That is, that is what we uh, think that attacker that an improved attacker would do. And how would you detect? You would of course again look at the physical layer properties uh, uh, of of this kind of an attack, and possibly remember these kinds of vehicles who kind of were not that you were not sure about that, okay, maybe this vehicle was malicious. So you try to remember more, uh, remember such kind of vehicles for longer time to detect, to have history on them. So that if you have a random jump like this uh, in the V2X space, that this gray vehicle here, the, the vehicle in the V2X space jumped from back to here, you can say that this is a random jump and this is possibly a misbehavior. Uh, yes, so this is how uh, we, uh, we have formulated uh, a cat and mouse game where you come up with an attacker, like a red blue, uh, red team, blue team uh, kind of thing, where the attacker becomes more, uh, atta attacker becomes uh, smarter. We make our detector smarter, and we expand our detect detectors from uh, the from the application layer to the physical layer and Mac layer, and we expand expand the portfolio of all the detectors. Uh, and now we have a demo for this uh, that we would like to present that where we try to simulate these attacks. And I would like to hand over uh, the screen to my colleague, Tom. Thank you, Rashid. For that. Yeah. yeah. Hello, everyone. Uh, in the following demo, I will present the three attacking scenario as presented by Rashid uh, in order to show the progression of our attacks. So first, uh, let's take a look at uh, our uh, demo setup. And this is a demo setup that we show in CES 2020. Uh, as you can see, there are two uh, road runner boards and one HMI device and one uh, demo control panel. Um, a road runner is a Qualcomm CV2X development um, platform, and that is equipped with Qualcomm CV2X chipset. And it is used as a road uh, onboard unit in this demo. Uh, here you can see we have two road runners, one of which uh, is the genuine, genuine host vehicle, while the other one is the remote attacker vehicle. Since the road runner can uh, play the pre-recorded uh, BSM files, so even though they are placed uh, stationary, uh, they can still transmit BSMs to each other as if they are traveling on a real road. Uh, on the other hand, the HMI display uh, is, a, uh, is an Android application that will visualize the interaction between the two vehicles. And the control panel is used to control and configure our demo. Uh, so here uh, uh, is the control panel of our demo. And on top of the panel, is you can see the option of our attack scenarios. 
uh, from fake EVL version one to version three. Actually, we have many more attacking scenarios, but here we only show those three. Uh, and below the uh, attack options is the our misbehavior protection system status uh, display, which will show the detection result of our misbehavior protection system. So now, uh, let's uh, start version one of the fake EBL um, explained by uh, Rashid. Uh, uh, in version one, the attacker generates a fake EBL warning, but keeps moving uh, both physically uh, as well as in, in the uh, V2X space as uh, shown in this HMI display. So in this HMI display, uh, as you can see, the green bubble here uh, is the host vehicle, uh, while the blue bubble is the remote vehicle. From the perspective of the host vehicle, based on the BSM it received, and the overlay here on the right uh, of the display is not a vehicle. Actually, it's a dashboard for the host vehicle. Uh, which will indicate the safety warnings generated by the safety applications. Uh, it has resumed the demo. So as you can see, from the perspective of the host vehicle, both are moving normally until the host vehicle uh, received a fake EBL warning. And this is because, uh, just as uh, Rashid explained, because of the inconsistency between the uh, position, field, and the EBL uh, flag in the BSMs. So you can see the blue bubble is still moving, but it transmits a fake EBL warning. Uh, however, our misbehavior protection system uh, can easily detect this inconsistency by applying the, the plausibility check and the consistency check. Uh, so this is a very easy uh, attacking scenario. Of course, uh, a smart attacker will come up with a smarter attacks. Uh, now let's look at the, the, the second one, uh, the version one, version two uh, of our fake uh, EBR attack. So in version two, explained by Rashid, the attacker will generate a fake EBR warning, uh, but, but other fields in the BSM are consistent, meaning that the attacker uh, will move in physical, uh, physically uh, but we will stop uh, in the V2X space. Now let's switch into the machine. So as you can see, uh, in this version, the blue bubble is uh, moving normally in the beginning, uh, but then it will stop in the V2X. As you can see here, the blue bubble indeed stopped in the V2X uh, space. And so, uh, the host vehicle we believe is a, uh, is a normal vehicle in the application layer. Uh, however, if we're applying our phys uh, physical layer detector, such as the signal strength, uh, we can detect such misbehavior. So our host vehicle can ignore this fake EBR warning and continue the motion. You can see here our host vehicle is still moving even though this, it detect this, uh, because it detects this uh, misbehavior. Uh, the attacker can keep finding ways to upgrade uh, its uh, attack, explained by Rashid. And so in version three, and the uh, attacker, uh, the host vehicle, uh, sorry, the attacker will enter a, a silent period after performing the first uh, fake EBR attack. Uh, and then he will disappear from the V2X space, hoping that the host vehicle will forget about him and then he will show up again. Not as Take a look at this uh, scenario. So in the beginning, uh, the, blue v, the blue bubble behaves normally. Uh, then he will perform the fake EBL version two, as you can see from in the V2X space, it indeed stopped, but then it disappeared, right? Hoping the uh, vehicle, for, uh, host vehicle forget about him. Now, after the seven period, it show up again and perform the attack again. So again, this attack can also be detected using the, like, the physical layer detectors uh, just introduced by Rashid. Okay. So as the demo shows that a smart attacker can always find ways to, uh, to create a smarter uh, attacks uh, as our detection algorithm uh, evolves. Uh, for example, we show that using the physical uh, layer, we can um, 
detect the uh, fake EB attack version two and version three. Uh, however, a smart attacker may circumvent our detect detector by, for example, matching the signal strength with valid distribution, valid uh, signal strength uh, distribution by adjusting the transmission power. And on other cases, attacker can use different MAC address and pseudonym certificates to perform a simple attack as uh, introduced uh, uh, previously uh, to fool the uh, majority-based detector. And actually, there are many more ways that uh, attacker can progress to perform more advanced uh, attacks. Uh, however, uh, by improving our uh, detection uh, system, uh, we are able to squeeze the attacker to the corner and raise the bar and the cost uh, of the successful attack. And on the other hand, uh, the progression of the attack can push for a stronger and more robust detection system. Thank you. Thank you, Rajit and Hudson. So uh, this com we are coming to the conclusion of this talk. So uh, what we showed you today is why, what is misbehavior, first of all, in V2X, and give you many examples. And then we even went through this misbehavior lifecycle, detection, local reaction, reporting, investigation, global reaction. And then we demonstrated the progression of an attack. What does the attacker do to, make, to be smarter and smarter? What would you test when you want to attack the system? So, and we give you a demo of this working on real onboard unit. So as a conclusion, really we, we understand why misbehavior protection is super important for more secure V2X deployment. You need to have it, otherwise authentication isn't sufficient. You will see this big data. You need to be able to analyze it and detect it. But what's good is that Misbehavior detection, reporting, investigation, reaction are all being standardized right now. So we hope that then really we're gonna raise that bar of making it harder for an attacker and all have at least minimum performance in terms of detection. And also what is really positive is that misbehavior protection solutions exist and have been deployed in, for example, one in the connected vehicle power deployment. So this is positive, you know, it's, it's there, we are ahead of the curve basically. But as we've seen, the attacker is always smarter and will try to counter what you do. So we still have a lot of open challenges and I'd really just like to give you three examples here. Uh, the first one is if you are using a machine learning based detector, therefore an attacker will use a visual example, a visual machine learning to fool your detection algorithm. So this is a really active field right now to look at visual machine learning. And so therefore, if you're based on that, you need to look at it. This is still a highly sophisticated level of attack, but it is a matter of time before it's make it easier to be there. The second part is that we've shown today only the detection, uh, the attacks on the, on the first step. So you need to investigate the attack on the reporting, investigation, and a global reaction. What could you do on those different stages? And finally, don't, don't forget that V2X will be part of an automated vehicle and therefore will be fused with other sensors. So you need to analyze the effect of V2X attack on the sensor fusion to understand how much inconsistency and uncertainty can you create just from the V2X standpoint. With that, this is the end of our presentation and we'll be happy to take questions. Thank you.